recharge apps and uh, there is an app on the left and the right and they, the both of them do pretty much the same thing they have uh, they help you recharge tell you about offers tell you about your usage if you look at it and ask yourself which one of these apps would you rather use you'll probably pick the one on the right and uh, why is that so this app on the right tells you your balance right so you need not ask what balance you have it automatically tells you that without you need uh, without you having to do anything and if you're low on balance it has a very helpful uh, bar over there that says you're running out of balance so you should probably do a recharge and uh, to make that experience great for you they also say you know what you, we have all of these offers that are doing uh, that are going on right now and you should do a recharge right away so what went right over here for the app on the right uh, first of all it identified you it knew who you were and it did not expect you to you know key in your mobile number every time uh, it you know recognized you and it got the information that you required without you asking for it right so if it is a mobile recharge app obviously you will need to know what your uh, talk time is what your balance is and it got it from the server and it started uh, showing it to you without you doing anything it also give you easy access to the most important action that you had to do uh, using the app and that's the recharge so two guiding principles one is timely information the other is important actions so if you have these two things in mind you can you know build a great uh, main activity let's look at some other apps uh, this is oneplus uh, service app so it gives you the most important information that is relevant to you it says that your warranty is up to so and so date and it tells you that uh, if you need a request if you need to request a service this is the button that you should be pressing right very focused this is another app that helps you track the amount of water you are drinking uh, and the main activity is very focused on that goal it says this is how you are doing uh, with the whole process so this is the track this is the uh, thing that you are tracking and you are so much so so far along in the process and it also gives you calls to drink you know more water this is an app that uh, probably a lot of us used to come here today and uh, instead of showing you uh, you know any information about your previous trips or instead of you know telling you uh, where your friends are right now it is focused on doing one thing getting you to book your next ride right so and that is timely it also tells you that there is you know the nearest cab is 2 minutes away and uh, there's a big fat button in right in the middle that says set pick up location and it has all of the information all of the other uh, filters that you could require uh, if you want to make changes so why is this important so we spend a lot of time and effort you know marketing our app we use a whole lot of processes and uh, we finally get a hard earned app download now what this happens after that is users open your app and the first thing that they see the first impression that you can make is through your main activity if that activity helps you get things done faster for whatever the reason the user has downloaded the app for they'll use you again and again and you can con convert them into an active user and you can get the engagement or revenue metrics that you like from them so designing a good main activity is a really crucial task and we set out to do this uh, with uh, the app that i work on uh, sensi we are a tv guide and remote so we help you figure out what's playing on tv right now and uh, so there are tens of thousands of shows playing across several languages and several channels and uh, there's a great content on tv and uh, a lot of us miss it because we simply do not know what's happening on tv and uh, our mission is to get 
you on top of this information and so that you do not wish miss a show that you should be wa watching so we set out to build a main activity and throughout this process we followed a set of principles these principles are also applicable if you are a site that has uh, user generated content or if you are a media app or even an e-commerce store if you simply have too much to show on your main activity and you're saying that i don't have that one thing and the one action that i can show but there's a lot more uh, you can use these principles to sort of guide how you craft your main activity so we had to help our users figure out what is the best show to watch on tv and the first thing that we did is put a lot of images on the app so we said uh, images are something that convey information to you a lot lot more faster than text and uh, we put we worked on getting you know images and icons for tv channels for shows and for pretty much everything that we have in the app and uh, we put a lot of this and we made a grid of images that said you know what these are the shows that are running on tv and you might want to check them out the next thing that we did we, we grouped all of these recommendations we grouped all of these tv shows based on specific anchors or pivots and this helped our users browse through this list a lot more faster so if you simply have a group of tv shows uh, you have to do this okay do i like the show probably yes because there is amar khan on it but we went a step ahead and we grouped all of these shows based on these pivots and looking at you know these list of recommendations became a lot more easier so you would look at a list that says english action movies and you would say oh you know what i'm in the mood for an english action movie right now let me check every english action movie that's on tv right now we you know got this we put this out uh, for our users to use and uh, we got one overwhelming feedback very soon and uh, they said you know what all of this is good uh, anchored groups and all is good and uh, and we love the way you're showing it but i want to know what's happening on star movies right now i want to know what movie is playing on my favorite channel and uh, i love what's usually on the show, usually on the channel and i want to be you know figuring out what's running and this is something that we figured out which is the way that people were doing the same thing before our app was to think about tv from a set of channels these are my ch favorite channels and you know these are the channels that i watch and i'm interested in the shows that are running on those channels so we had to keep in mind the set ways of you know doing things and not try to drastically change it but just influence behavior so we said you know what this is your favorite channel list and this is what's happening on this but there are these shows also playing on all of these other channels and uh, you might probably like them and to get a big boost on get, getting the best shows on tv we asked people to uh, tell us about their interest so we said uh you have your favorite shows you have your favorite channels you have your favorite actors tell us about them and uh, we'll you know do a great job for you and this is something that people like doing as well it gives them a sense of ownership it says it takes it from the sensi app to my sensi app because it knows about my interest it knows about my favorite channels and my favorite actors and whenever something's running uh, it will you know uh, show them so we had all of this information coming in and uh, we said uh, these are the favorite act, uh, you know attributes of all of these people but we also had information on what people were watching and we used this information to get to bring a new bar called trending and this helped us figure out uh, events that would happen on tv so if there was some soap where you know a marriage was going to happen or if uh, there was uh, a cricket match that is playing on tv or if there is an event like oscars that's running on tv 
uh, these would automatically figure that out. And uh, this is really wisdom of the crowd, right? So all of these individually, all of us are contributing all of this information. Uh, but what what comes out of that data? And this is something that we you know made available to our users, and uh, it helped. Uh, this is something that you know greatly you know guided what uh, people would you know like to watch. So we did all of these things and. Uh, uh, and we had great recommendations, so our users knew, you know, exactly what to watch. But there was a missing piece. The missing piece was once I figured out what I wanted to watch, I wanted to actually get to watching it. And this process usually involved searching for the remote, thinking about what channel does this actually correspond to, and you know, keying in those channel numbers and pressing uh, and actually watching that channel. And we found that this is something that was a disconnect in the whole process. So we invested you know, time and effort in building the ability for you to change uh, TV channels right from your mobile. So if your phone had IR blaster capability, you could just tap on one of these images, uh, point to your TV, and it would directly change, uh, it would directly tune into the channel. So this really completed the process of you know you wanting to discover what's on TV or wanting to search for something on TV. You you know evaluating among the great shows that are running on TV and you you know figuring out to watch it and actually to watching it. And this is something that was important, which is you started on this process of discovery. You should actually help them complete it uh, in the easiest way possible. Coming to important actions, our users might not always know that they have to do specific things. And small nudges, small pushes saying, hey, you know what, you might want to do this particular action, it's going to be helpful for you. This goes a long way to actually getting them to do things that you want. So if you figure out that your personalization might not work well with very low data, you can have simple buttons or simple triggers saying, if you personalize more, this app will work a lot better for you. And this is very unobtrusive. It is in the feed and you can just scroll it right away and you can cancel it if you want. But this goes a long way to pe getting people to do things that you want. And because it's in the main activity, because it's in the activity that people see every day, it gets a lot of attention the odds of people actually doing that activity is uh, higher. So this goes with having timely information. You should really think about how your user is using it and the context of people using it. So for us, when we imagine our users using our app, it's in the living room, it's probably on an evening or a weekend uh, in the living room in front of the TV and that's when they open the app and they figure out what's happening on TV. Now when people are doing this and when they've tuned into a particular program, the app needs to respond to that and help them answer questions like how long is the program, what uh, is there an app related to the program, uh, what videos of, are there on YouTube related to the program. Essentially things that people will obviously ask uh, related to that program, that information should be got right away. So like on the first screen, we see that the app on the right got the information of balance without you asking them. Um, we should proactively get information that is useful uh, for our users. We should not make them you know, ask the questions that the phones already should be knowing the answer to. So a lot of this is happening and we had to introduce our users to all of these features. Uh, usually this, we expect uh, people to know this from a certain advertisement or from our Play Store descriptions or from the priming and onboarding that we do as soon as they open the app. We say, this is the app, these are all its features and you know, have fun. But when people use the app and you know they might not go through all of these processes, they might skip the descriptions on the Play Store 
and uh, they are suddenly using a feature and they might not know what this feature is about. So we found that the best way of making them aware of this feature was just before they use it for the first time. Just have a pop-up that says, hey, this is a new feature, you've never used it before and this is how it works. And this goes a long way in telling them how something works and this makes them a lot more comfortable with uh, using their app. Some of the things that we had to you know, keep in mind while doing this. So we talked about how you know, information helps you, helps you decide you know, what you should be doing and, uh, and we, should, we talked about how you should be getting this information uh, and showing it to the users. Uh, you shouldn't be overdoing it. Look at your main activity and say, is this information very crucial for, uh, for the main activity or can it be behind a click? And uh, you should be uh, careful not to clutter or not to overload the screen. When building recommender systems, one common, uh, one common mistake is to take, to take the favorites of the user too strongly. And if someone tells me that I like sports, everything that I show is, oh, you like sports and not nothing else. And this is called a filter bubble effect. Uh, you take too strongly to the recommendations and thinks the user doesn't like anything else. And this is not true. So we use a bunch of mechanisms. We also you know, try to get the popular shows and show them anyways. We also have curated recommendations that we show and we try to reduce this uh, effect. Uh, while doing all this, and uh, there was a talk on dynamic view rendering and things like that, so it's important to uh, ensure that while building ranked recommendation systems like this, and you know, uh, mutating uh, the screen to such an extent based on the user preferences, you should not lose predictability. So people who use our app develop a mental model of how the app is, and uh, they expect the app to work like that. And if they don't, they lose a sense of control and they are uncomfortable with the app. So while doing all this, it's also uh, important to adhere by a mental model and say, okay, this is how the app works and it's going to continue to work like this. Uh, and uh, this is the main activity that we ended up with. Uh, thank you. Any questions? Uh, hi. So you did say that uh, apart from the users' uh, selections of the his favorites, you add your own content. Yeah. So how do you know whether the user is responding to the stuff which you are throwing at him apart from his favorites? Uh, you can. So one of the things that you can do is for something that they have subscribed to. Uh, and that is the part of the thing that they can control. So if I say I am following Amir Khan, I like Amir Khan. So it is expected for you to get Amir Khan movies. The question is beyond that, what do we show, right? So one of the things that we do is uh, we move away from that. We say, okay, what's connected to Amir Khan? So you have Amir Khan. Amir Khan is usually acts in Hindi movies. So you probably like Hindi movies. And so we have a bunch of extra recommendations for you to show. Um, if, you know, he's also acted in an English movie, we have a bunch of recommendations for you to show. So we go around in the neighborhood. The other is beyond these, beyond the related recommendations, we also have the trending thing, which shows you, if a match is popular, it shows you the match anyways. So what it gets you is, uh, and if there's a popular uh, event running, like the Oscars, for example, we show it to all of our users, but it need not be ranked very high. It can be ranked lower so that when they scroll down and look at it, they'll find it, right? Uh, but then when they find it and if they then favorite it, uh, then we have more information to work with, right? And we also have the other thing of if there is not enough favorites, if it's not diverse, we also prod them to, you know, tell uh, if they liked it. So if you search for a particular channel or a, or a particular actor, uh, we say, okay, do you like this actor? I mean, you search for it, shall I favorite them, uh, you know, for you automatically. So we continuously build this graph of interest so that uh, the recommendations get richer. So do you use any tools for such analytics or is it like all? Pardon me? Do you use any, any third party tools for such analytics? No, or so we've uh, written it uh, ourselves.
Uh, hi. Uh, so, what is Sensi's monetization model? So, uh, okay. Uh, we have, uh, so one of the things that we can do, and we've not started doing this uh, yet, is doing something called uh, promoted shows, which is uh, if a show wants to promote itself, the way that they can uh, do it right now is only through uh, TV. So, you know, on other channels or on, during the ad breaks, you get ads for other shows. They could do it uh, right here. We also have, uh, so with, you know, these programs, we tell you what's available uh, on your app. So how do I connect mobile to your app? So we send uh, what YouTube uh, uh, content is relevant to this, what apps are relevant to this, what products are relevant to this. So if you're watching Chota Beam, we tell you that there are Chota Beam water bottles on, you know, Flipkart and uh, Amazon that you can probably buy. And uh, if you're watching Superman, there are these apps that you can buy. And affiliate uh, traffic is uh, something that we can go to. But we've not focused on monetization so far. Okay, so uh, you are looking forward to collaboration, su such kind of collaboration? Yes. Yeah. So uh, the other thing that we have is, uh, so I told you about uh, a way to change channels. So if your phone has an IR blaster, you can change channels right away. But we also have hardware products for the phones that do not have this capability. So we have a hardware product that uh, that uh, uh, is acts as a Bluetooth to infrared bridge. So you tap on a channel, it communicates to the product through Bluetooth, and that communicates to your set-top box and switches to that channel. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, actually, 80% uh, of the usability issues are resolved when we do, when we go with paper prototyping. So, do you use paper prototyping in designing screens for Sensi Remote? So, uh, we do uh, prototype uh, the screens uh, on paper, yes. Uh, we absolutely do that. And uh, while doing this, we also look at uh, analytics and see how, you know, things are being uh, uh, used. So, we have uh, fast cycles for all of these things and we make a minor change and we put it out there. And with every change we do, we have some sort of analytics tracking related to that particular feature, and we see how it's being used. Thank you. Uh, what is the data source for this? Uh, do you have like content generators, or do you use some kind of API? Or, uh, yeah, we use. Uh, there is a provider that uh, that we use. Thank you.